All right, so there it is. I'm installing a insincorator, uh, one horsepower uh, garbage disposal. Uh, this one, the one horsepower is actually seven years. I mean, that's a pretty solid warranty. And I think six of those years, they will come to your house and repair it. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I do know it's for seven years. So that's awesome. Um, and it's pretty heavy duty. So yeah, ours broke and this is the one I got. Let me show you what's in the box. All right, you know, it came with a baffle, it came with a plug, came with the, all these parts right here. And if you look inside the box when you get it, not the reflector, sorry, all this stuff. All right, here's the tools I will be using. I need a plumber's putty, an adjustable wrench, another wrench here. I don't have a plumber's wrench, but I think I'll be okay. Uh, you know, a multi-screwdriver, if you don't have one of these, definitely, I like these. I got a flathead, a Phillips head on there, and a pocket knife, because you always, you're always gonna have to cut something, you know. So that's what we've got. And we're gonna get started here in a little bit. I'm going to remove the disposal and then I'll put on the new one. Thanks for watching. Hey, here we are underneath the sink. And you know, as you can see, I've got my camera pointing out. So the first thing I did and everyone needs to do before they do this is turn off the power to your garbage disposal. All right, not just by turning off the switch, but go to your panel and literally turn it off. All right, you don't want any accidents when this is being done. You don't want to get hurt. That's the first thing you're going to do. And when you buy one of these disposals, there will be a manual that walks you through this. Um, you're going to disconnect the downspouts here. All right, you're going to take these off and that way we can remove the disposal here and we can work in this area uh, unimpeded. All right, so what I'll do, you know, obviously lefty loosey, righty tighties. We're going to take this off here. I'll disconnect these. Make sure you have a bowl under here to catch the water. Uh, and yeah, I'll be right back when I'm finished. Okay, so now here's a part that's kind of confusing to a lot of people, all right, and myself included. Uh, what you're gonna not do is loosen these to drop it. Right? If we look at it, it looks like that's what we're gonna do, but honestly, loosen those, they go to nothing up here, all right? What you're going to use is this thing they call a wrench at. They gave it to you when you bought your disposal, and if you don't have it, um, if you're just kind of removing a disposal without it, and anything this shape will work, all right, a little hex key. Uh, so what you're gonna do, is you're gonna put it in here, all right? You see this, this is, this is visible right here, and you're going to hold your disposal and just kind of pry it, and there we go. So there we go, there's the disposal, I just dropped it out. We've got our electrical here, which would be the next step. I'm going to remove this. I'll show you how that's done. And we're seeing daylight here, so we're getting closer to having this thing out. So stick around, I'll be right back. Now we're going to remove the wires uh, from the disposal. All All right, as you can see here now, I got the Romex pulled out, all right? We got our white, black ground. And when you do that, save your wire nuts. No need to get new ones. You just twist these back into place when it's time to go. So here's the old disposal. It has been dropped out, so we're gonna remove that. Oops. And then the next step we're gonna do is remove all the old stuff, uh, the flange and everything like that from up here, all right? So we're gonna come back for that. Now here is where we remove those three screws that I had mentioned no need to remove before. So let's get these out. Okay, now using a flathead, the flat end, flathead end of your driver here, you're gonna pop off the snap ring, which is right here. All right, and then check it out. That pops off. All right, we got that, that's gone. Here's the snap ring, right? And then the next stop, we're just gonna go up top and remove this flange here, all right? And we're also gonna drop this down. All right, we don't take that off, well, it's not going anywhere then, all right? So we're gonna go back up top, we're gonna pop this off, and I'll show you how it's done. All right, and that's it, gone. So what you wanna do is clean up this area before you do the install. Um, 
mean, that's just how I roll. You always want a clean, fresh surface. Get off any of that old plumber's putty right there. You know, people talk about leaking and things like that. You want to get a clean work area, a clean workspace. So when you put down your new plumber's putty, uh, you're going to have a fresh seal here, all right? And if you want to, come across with like a scrub daddy washcloth. They're pretty durable, pretty tough, and just clean this out. But as you can see, this is pretty spotless, it's dry. And that's it, that's how we drop it out. That's how we detach the old disposal. We're gonna get rid of that, we're gonna throw it out. And thank you for watching. What we'll be doing next, and if you're gonna stick around for the rest of this video, because you know I'm doing one long video or two separate videos. Uh, next, we're gonna be putting in the putty, plumber's putty, and getting this thing ready for the new garbage disposal. Thanks for watching, and I hope to stick around for part two. All right, so here's the plumber's putty. Get it for like $3, $2 at your local hardware store. You're gonna put a half inch rope of putty around here. Now, don't be afraid to put too much on because when you squeeze the flange down, uh, it will all come out of the side and we can just trim that off, right? This is stainless steel, this won't be a problem. If you're using a marble or plastic sink, I don't, I don't know many people who do, uh, don't use this. That's not my problem, you're gonna have to find another way. Uh, I'm not a plumber, I'm just showing you how to do this way in a stainless steel stink. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to put the rope on. We'll do a quick time lapse of that, and then we'll get back to uh, more instruction. All right, the directions now say to uh, press down the flange onto your, your, uh, your ring here, your putty ring. But the problem is you can't get it off, all right? Now here's where, you know, if I was a plumber or a contractor, um, hopefully you plumbers and contractors are laughing at me because the, the answer is really simple, everybody. Uh, just think outside the box if you are a lay person and think, well, it has to come off somehow, right? And it's a snap ring. So what you do is just kind of pry it off here. Of course, I got it off real easy the first time. There you go. Just kind of pop it off. All right, so the snap ring is off. Put that somewhere safe. And voila, your sink flange, okay? Now, like I said, the next step, we're gonna push it down onto here. Right, let me get it in. And they say to push down firmly. All right, and the other thing is when you start securing this from the bottom, I have a feeling it's gonna push it down even better, all right? So it says to push it down firm, get it in there. You know, you want this extra putty to come out because it shows that the putty in there is making a seal. All right, so we put that in there. And then we're going to remove this excess putty here. It just peels right off. It's easy to work with, everybody. It's not intimidating. Um, it's kind of like the stuff you put on windows for window glaze, it's just not as sticky. It really is a putty, all right? So here we go. We trim off the excess, get that out of here. All right, push down. Looking good. And we'll clean up. The, we'll clean this up a little more uh, when I'm finished. All right, come around, get off all the excess. And there we go. All right, now it says place something heavy over it. Um, you know like a towel, like put a towel down and then place the disposal on top of that because this is going to be holding the flange in place while we secure it from down below. That's literally what it says in the directions. So that's literally what I'm doing. And we're gonna go underneath, I'm gonna show you how we attach the rest of this stuff. Okay, so in order, we're gonna do fiber gasket, backup flange, we'll go over that, and then our mounting ring, okay? So we'll do a quick time lapse here, just see how I do it. Uh, and then I'll show you how we do the snap ring without a time lapse, and we'll go from there. All right, now before you put it up, get this stuff lined up, all right? You see what I'm saying here? You want these, these pieces to all line up together here, because otherwise, if you're off, your mounting screws will have nowhere to go, all right? So just take a second, line everything up. It's really not that difficult, but it's very important, okay? We slide it up over here, all right, and then we put on the, uh, what's this thing called, that ring, all right, 
in there. They're all lined up. We got our snap ring here. And just like we took that other one off, it's gonna take a little bit of prying. As I say in my other videos, some elbow grease, right? Uh, and it's kind of a pain in the ass, but it's it's a very crucial step here. So I'm gonna get this on, pry open the snap ring here. All right, put it on in the back first, the part that comes open. There we go, snapped in there. All right, so now this won't drop. All right, the next step, is we're just gonna put our three mounting screws up through there. Okay, so I've taken off the electrical plate cover. We're under the sink. I'll do my best to make sure everyone can see what I'm working on here. All right, and we've got our Romex coming out here. We're going to feed this uh, through our electrical plate. All right, here we go. So we've got white, ground, black, neutral, ground, hot. Uh, what we're going to do is just connect everything now. And there's a real nice loop on this neutral here. I mean, on this ground. So I'm not even going to try to re-loop it. What I'll do here is just take off this ground screw. And we'll use that, all right? And again, the order always goes white, black, ground. Okay, um, so we have these here. And once I make these connections with the wire nut, I will come back and put electrical tape on. You guys will see that when I'm finished. And just give yourself a, you know, a clean workspace here, a clean working area. And, you know, got the two connected right there. Get them on nice and secure. All right. I'll we'll do the black. Do the hot. Don't get your ground stuck in there. And again, just twist these on to the right. Nice and tight. All right. And then you do your ground. And for the ground, I just get the screw here. I just feed it right through my ground loop on the Ramex. Tighten that in. These are actually the Phillips head screw, screws, the Phillips heads that uh, you can fit a fat flat head into. Uh, my Phillips said I need a new one, so this is actually really helpful. We're gonna get that down and nice and tight, okay? You don't want your ground coming out. All right, we're gonna tape these up, get the plate cover back on, and keep moving. All right, here we go with the discharge tube, uh, hooking this up. So let me be clear here, you're gonna have three parts. I'm not counting the two screws that go with this. You're gonna have your tube, all right? Now make sure the length of your tube is appropriate. Make sure it's the length of the same one if you're replacing the same size dishwasher so that you don't have to make a cut on one you've already mounted it. All right, so here we go. You're gonna have your flange and you're going to have your gasket, all right? Do not forget, flange over the discharge tube, then place your gasket, all right, gasket will fit right in there, and then mount, okay? Crucial step. I mean, you'd figure it out anyway, but I'm trying to save one step. And then we just uh, secure that on. And I'll be back after I have this screwed into place. Okay, so now we're going to be mounting the disposal uh, to the top, all right? all right? And what you need to do here is either get two people or be confident enough that you can hold up the disposal with one hand and turn the ring with the other. This thing weighs about 19 pounds. Um, or, or just prop something underneath of it, all right? I'm just gonna use 
just gonna use myself. And what you also wanna do is make sure the disposal, the drain spout, is pointed in the same direction that it was when you removed your previous disposal. Otherwise, you know, your, your pipes might not fit properly. So what you do is you lift it up and you first secure that into place. All right, you secure the disposal into place. Now these rings here, this ring on top, it's gonna be places it can go in. All right, uh, so you line it up and then get all three in place and you just turn it tight to the right. All right, and twist that into place. And that's it. All right, now it's secure. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I've hooked up the pipes, all right, the uh, tubes again. I'm gonna turn on the sink, fill it up, and we're gonna look for leaks. Okay, it's been tested for leaks. Uh, there are no leaks, we're good to go. So now what I'll do is I'm just gonna see if this really chews up the food. I'm gonna dump in some old eggs here, some leftover eggs. You know, no one likes cold old eggs. I'm gonna get those all shoved down in the disposal. Rinse it out, get everything in there. All right. All right, so we got the water running. It works. The disposal is still mounted under the sink. The food is gone. Quiet, way quieter than the other version I had with the half, half horsepower motor. Uh, yeah, so I hope this video helped. I hope everyone was able to see. Uh, how I installed this garbage disposal in my sink and how I took out the other one. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and hope everyone's doing all right out there. See you later. Bye.